Today we are going to be taking some review notes that are going to help you for your quiz on Monday coming up. It's over sections 4.1 to 4.4. The first one that we're going to be talking about today is telling me whether or not the number is prime or composite and then explaining your answer. Carlos, number one is 35. What do you think the answer is? Composite. If you remember, composite, I said, means complicated. That means there are more factors other than one in itself. What's your reasoning that that's composite? Five times seven. Five times seven, you are correct. Now, another factor of 35 is one times 35. But could you tell me one times 35 to explain that something's composite? No. No, why not? Because it's um, one times Okay, whenever you're saying one times itself, that makes me think that you think the answer is a prime answer, okay? So make sure when you're telling me it's composite that you give me something other than one in itself. So excellent job, Carlos. Next one, 23. Katie? Um, it's prime. Why is it prime? Um, it's only one times 23. One times 23 is the only numbers that you can multiply together to get the answer 23. Excellent job. Let's go on to the next one, number three. Write two fractions that are equivalent to the given fraction. If you remember from our notes, we did say you can either multiply by the same number on top and bottom, or you can divide by the same number on top and bottom. I want you guys to try this on your own and to come up with two fractions that are equivalent. 15 over 30. Who can tell me one example of what you did? Michael, what'd you do? Three, six, and... How'd you get three six? Okay, he divided by 5 on top and on bottom. Remember, this is the work I want to see. I want to know how you get your answer, okay? Remember, 5 over 5 is the same thing as the number 1. So I'm just dividing by the number 1. So obviously I'm going to get an equal fraction because I'm still going to get myself. It just looks a little bit different. So he says here that his answer was 3 sixths. Very good. Am I finished? No. No. He gave me 1. Who can give me another 1? Kyla, what would you do? You did times three? Okay. Once again, it does not matter what number you multiply or divide by as long as it's the same number on top as it is on bottom. What did you get when you did that? 45 over 90. 45 over 90. Did anyone else do that same one? Okay. Once again, I do not care how you get your answer. A lot of our answers are going to look different. For this one, you can see that they divided by five on top and bottom. They multiplied by three. You could have multiplied by two. You could have divided by 15. All right, so I do not care as long as you have two equivalent fractions. This one asks us to write the fractions in simplest form and tell whether or not they are equivalent. So I want you guys to try to do this on your own. Remember, all you're going to do to start it off is go ahead and rewrite those original fractions, and now you have to divide them and get them as simple as you possibly can get them. So reduce them as low as they go. What can go into a 25 that can also go into a 40? The number 5. Remember, whatever you divide by on top, you must be fair and divide by on bottom. What do you get? Uh, 5 over 8. 5 eighths is correct. Okay? Let's go to the next one. 60 over 84. Two. Carlos, what can it be divided by? Okay, we could divide by 2 on top and 2 on bottom. Just remember, be fair. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Carlos, when you do that, what do you get? 30 over 42. Guys, is this as simple as it can get? Nope. What can go into a 30 that can also go into a 42? Three. Three. Okay, I hear 3 and I hear 2. Either one could work. I'm going to go ahead and do a 2, but once again, either number would have worked. If I divided by 2, what should I get? 15, 15 over 21. Can that be reduced? Yes. Divide by what? 3. Divide by three. Okay, so we just did a whole lot of work right there. And when we did it, what did you get your answer as? Five sevenths. Five sevenths. Can that be reduced? No. no. Let me give you a trick. It did not have to take us this much work to do. There was one number I could have divided by. Here's how you can figure out what that one number could have been. Here I divided by two, then I divided by two, then I divided by three. What is two times two? Four. What is four times three? Wow. 12. So what we could have done is we could have taken our original 60 divided by 84 
and we could have divided by 12 on top and bottom, and when you did that, you would have got 5 sevenths, okay? Now, I don't care how you get the answer. Either way, you got 5 sevenths, so that's fine with me, but I'm just showing you there is an easier way most of the time, but if you cannot figure out what that number is, Keep dividing by two if it's an even number and it'll always get you that correct answer, okay? So the first one is five eighths and the second one is five sevenths. This is them in simplest form. Do those equal each other? No. No, they do not. Five eighths is not the same thing as five sevenths. So the answer is no, they are not equivalent to each other. In order for something to be equivalent to each other, it would have had to say like five sevenths and five sevenths. Those are equivalent to each other because they're the same exact thing, okay? But since we didn't have that, the answer is no. Number five asks us to list all the factors of the numbers. What'd we get? One times? Two. Or 24. 24. Two times? Twelve. Three times? Eight. Four times? Six. Five times? Nothing. That's it. Nothing. That is it, okay? A lot of you just left it like this, but remember, in order to list all the factors, you do need to put them in order from least to greatest. And these are all of the factors of the number 24. Number six says to find the GCF, the numbers, by listing factors, all right? We just did a problem that was listing the factors, and then we're just going to say whether or not they are relatively prime. So let's start with the number 28. One times what number equals 28? 28. One times 28. What would the two times number be? 14 is correct. Who can tell me what the next one would be by listing your factors? A four. How many times does four go into it? Seven. Seven. Are there any other factors? No. That is it. So I'm finished with the number 28. Let's go on to the 45. Help me out with it, Kyla. One times 45 And that's it. Good job. Landon, what should I do next? Very good. We want to put them in order from least to greatest. So start with your first number. And then go ahead and do your second number directly underneath it. What's the next step I have to do? Jakari? Circle, not the factors, but circle the pairs, okay? Jakari, what's the first pair that you see? One, what's the next one? You are correct, there are no more. So that means that my GCF, my greatest factor that they have in common is the number one. If we know that our GCF is one, does that mean it's relatively prime or not relatively prime? It is relatively prime. There are no other numbers that it has in common, so this is something you're going to want to memorize. If the, the greatest common factor is 1, the answer is always relatively prime. Next up, number 7 and 8 asks us to find the GCF and the LCM by using prime factorization. What does prime factorization Upside mean? Down Upside down division. Asia, help me with the number 45. Okay, divide by 5, and what do you get? Nine is divide by three, and what do you get? Is three a prime number? Yes. Yes, it is. So I'm finished now with that one. Okay, let's go on to the number eighty-one. Who wants to do eighty-one for me? Alex, go ahead. Okay, nine is not a prime number. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and do a three. How many times does three go into eighty-one? All right, 27 times. Is 27 a prime number? No, it's composite, so we want to keep going. Isabel, what can go into a 27? A three. A three, how many times? Nine times. Nine times. Michael, is nine a prime number? No. No, it's not. What number can go into nine? Three. Three, how many times? Three times. Three times. Gabby, is three a prime number? Yes. Yes, so I'm officially finished, okay? Now what do I have to do? Put them in order from least to greatest. So 45 was my first number. What's the tiniest prime number we came up with? 
a three, then what's another? Three. And then five. five. Okay, so listen. Some of you might have done that order different. Some of you might have started 45 divided by three. In that case, your numbers would have been in a slightly different order. All that matters is when you get down here, you put the numbers in order from least to greatest. Then you're going to go ahead and put the 81 underneath it and put all four of those threes there. Emma, what should I do next? Circle the pairs. What should I circle? Three and three. All right, so yesterday we talked about this. The two become one. one. So I'm going to bring down that three and bring down the other three. What's the answer? Nine. nine. Three times three is nine. Is that my GCF or is that my LCM? LCM. All right, I heard both, GCF and LCM. Remember, GCF is a factor. Repeat after me. Factors fit into numbers. Factors fit into numbers. And then LCM is M multiple, least common multiple. Multiples get bigger, okay? So just look at your answer right here. If it's a nine, is that fitting into a number or is that bigger than my original numbers? Nine is not bigger than my two original numbers. All right, so that's a factor that fits into those numbers. So what is the answer? Is that my GCF or my LCM? That is the GCF. Okay, so the main thing you've got to remember, the difference between the GCF and the LCM is you have to do something with your leftovers. We didn't touch the leftovers on this one, okay? So right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this over here, and this is going to help me to find my LCM. You do not have to go back through and do that prime factorization all over again because it's going to be the same answer. But we do go in, and we're going to circle the 2 become 1, and now the difference is, what do I have to bring down? Bring down the leftovers. What's the tiniest leftover we had? A three. So I'm going to multiply by another three. Are there any more leftovers? Multiply by what number? Another three, because you're doing it in order from least to greatest. Are there any more leftovers? The five. So multiply by the five. Please multiply all of those numbers together, and you will find the least common multiple, or the LCM. For those who have multiplied it out, what did you get? 405. 405. Okay, so remember, go ahead and put this up here. Least common multiple. Remember, multiples get bigger. Okay, so right here, what you have told me with the LCM is that a 45 and an 81 both can fit into a number. They share that number. The least common multiple, the number that's the smallest that they both can fit into is 405. So let's look at our two answers. The GCF is 9, the LCM is 405. Are those relatively prime or not relatively prime? No, relatively They are not relatively prime. What does the answer have to be in order for it to be relatively prime? One. It has to be 1. And clearly, these answers right here are not the answer number 1. So please make sure for your quiz that you understand the difference between relatively prime and not relatively prime. One last example for today. This is a review, but you're going to need to know this for your quiz also. The mean, median, mode, and range of this data set right here. What's the first thing you do to a data set like that? Put it in least to greatest in order. Put it in order from least to greatest. Okay, then I want you guys to do these four steps on your own. All right, when I put it in order from least to greatest, I've got a 4, 4, 7, 9, and 11. Finding the mean. What does the mean mean? Average. 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 What do I have to do for an average? average. When you add it up, what do you get? You get 35. 35. Remember with the mean, I want to see some work. Now listen, a lot of you just left it as the answer 35. Think about it. An average. That means about what the data set was, the average. It's about the same as all the numbers in your data set. Does 35 look anything like the numbers right there in our data set? It's way too big. Another tip, the mean will always be in between the smallest number and the largest number. Does the number 35 fit into anywhere in between a 4 and an 11? No. So let that be a clue to you. The answer is not 35. What do I have to do with the 35? Divide by the number of numbers in our data set, which is 5. So the answer was 7. What does the median mean? 
The middle number. What's my middle number? Seven. Remember, some of you guys were trying to tell me the answer was nine. You've got to put the, the data set in order from least to greatest before you can tell me what the middle number is, okay? So the way you show me work is simply by circling the middle number. The mode. What is the mode? The number that occurs the most? Which one occurred twice in our data set? Four. The number four. You don't have to show any work for that one. Finally, the range. How do I find the range? Subtract the highest and the lowest. Take the biggest number and subtract the smallest number. What do you get? Seven. 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 Who got all four of those correct on their own? I was about to, but I think. Excellent job. Okay, so this right here is going to help you. You have a quiz coming up on Monday. If you understand this review sheet, you should do great on your quiz.